Hello, Uta here in the garden. A nice sunny day. It's un kind of unusually warm. I'm probably overdressed. But you can see that things are kind of done in the garden. I think this is sort of interesting. The <laughs> zinnia, the dried up zinnias. <laughs> and uh, here is the... Uh, anemone putting out these seed heads yes and now we're getting back to my bench um, where I am going to show you actually <laughs> some Rudbeckia the black-eyed Susans there were a few more blooming isn't that just wonderful you can see how the woods in behind me is much lighter and uh, I decided to do uh, my reading that I promised of um, the preface of In the Curated Woods. Uh, <sighs> yes, um, while I'm outside here in <laughs> the woods. <laughs> Yes, there's the tops of the trees looking pretty bare. <laughs> all right, now this is also kind of in this um, uh, series of responses to the autogynophile um, Phil Illy going to a meeting where he really has no business. <laughs> oh, just to remind you that my book in the Curated Woods, True Tales from a Grass Widow, published at iUniverse.com, that uh, to let you know it does have <laughs> these beautiful, if I may say so, since I'm the photographer, photos. Um, and they are of other times in the garden. So I actually started writing this, I think, uh, a couple of years ago uh, during the fall. There's the first picture that's with the preface. Um, a long, long time ago, my motherhood became a shadow. I couldn't have imagined it or anticipated it. I gave birth and breastfed. I cooked and cleaned and wiped. I sang lullabies, inhaling the smell of my baby's downy, warm heads. I thought I was working for my family's future when I waited for my son's little bodies to drop into that infant sleep on my chest. My husband then was and still is the biological father of my children. My boys have grown to be men. The man I married, this man, is no longer a man, so he says. His journey transformed me into a grass widow, which I say instead of trans widow in my book, because at that time I was so reticent to even have the word trans for fear of my book getting canceled and kicked off of the platforms that are selling it. So uh, I will read it as I wrote it, grass widow. Grass widow being a term that is from uh, earliest citation 1528, meaning an honorable woman who no longer lives with her husband. Um, okay, his journey transformed me into a grass widow, a woman whose husband, so he says, is no longer the man he started out as. There are drifts and rivers to be told about this widowhood, and I do that. The tale is of the fullness of my motherhood, a muscle both deep and exposed. With a similar sensation, I recall my own mother's wrinkled, downy skin, my grandmother's, plural, knowing voices. I'm getting that. <laughs> I'm getting that wrinkled, downy skin. <laughs> and I'm grateful. I watch the shadows of the trees on my land, lines of the absence of light. Objects like trees block our sunlight. Trees are sundials as their shadows creep across the forest floor, revealing the position of the sun. I stand like a tree, blocking sunlight, 
proving by my shadow that I exist. I stand a woman, revealed in my shadow though it's distorted, lengthening my features. I am an adult human female, a changed world, repositions others' shadows, drawing me back through seasons, years, and decades. This book documents nine months in my natural bubble during our pandemic. I sheltered mostly within its confines, finding solace while learning my land. We still do as we will to contain the contagion. So this is of its, of its time. It's funny, I have a little bug here. I'm gonna brush it off, <laughs> a little beetle. <laughs> uh, let's see, my narrative with botanical notes is written in the vein of Henry David Thoreau's notes on wildflowers and their bloom times from almost two centuries ago. The nine months recorded in my habitat complete a just and honest rendition of an ebb and flow in the seasons of my mind, my recollections of joy and sorrow. Learning and curating my woods carried me along and told parallel tales to weave in with my past. Uh, and I'm not going to read every single paragraph. Uh, oh yes, let's see. Uh, other grass widows, when they've recalled their unexpected surprises in the public sphere, have experienced pylons through social media and even in person. We're vilified as religious right-wingers as we express our logic and common sense. The younger generation of grass widows fear being put out of their careers. And now I know from my data on 54 of us that uh, a, a younger generation woman married to a man who is suddenly doing this, one third of the time, 19 out of 54 of us, you also must be aware that those were the 19 who were sexually assaulted by him. And this is why I feel I really have to uh, continue to respond to this Phil Illy blue velvet dress business because there is such a lack of recognition of the violence directed towards us. Uh, such was the case of Christine Benvenuto, the author of Sex Changes, published in November of 2012 by St. Martin's Press. Benvenuto was accosted at book signings where her voice was drowned out. Uh, I call my sons not by their beloved given names, inherited from their great-grandfathers, but instead by well-chosen pseudonyms. In my first drafts, I couldn't rename them. I called them my progeny the older and the younger, as in a Viking saga, to give myself the distance I needed to allow the memories back. And then I gave them pseudonyms. Uh, I chose Nettie as a neutral, uncommon name to avoid the taint of any particular actual name. That's for my ex-husband, Nettie. The non-certified woman whom Nettie went to see for sessions to qualify for surgery, I call Ruth the Charlatan. She practiced medicine without qualifications, pronouncing diagnoses that shattered lives of other wives and children. Ruth stated openly that she had no special training for this field. I spoke to her twice. Her words are burned into my brain all these years later. Nettie, who now identifies as a woman, is the chief operating officer of a tech company, a business that has listed annual earnings of many millions for many years. Nettie is by no means living a downtrodden, marginalized life, unable to find reasonable employment. I did note, <laughs> I looked him up recently. I look him up about once a year. Uh, he's not the COO anymore. He's called uh, Vice President of Growth. And I want to rename that uh, Vice President of Grooming <laughs> because this tech company has a whole uh, section of its website devoted to uh, pronouns <laughs> and uh, promoting the grooming pronoun workshops in world-class museums, 
which they're supposed to be just doing the database work for. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I note that in 2005, the year his contract started, because he was uh, in contract to become the CEO and have 51% uh, equity in the company, and therefore when I took him back to court for non-payment issues, uh, he listed an income that was artificially low, but he falsely did not say, uh, he did not include the whole truth, which was that he was being compensated by equity. The company has now been sold to some Canadian conglomerate. Um, okay, yes. <laughs> I was just rising from the financial struggles of my first phase of single motherhood involving multiple jobs and a master's degree completed at night school. I didn't receive the stipulated child support. It appears from the government contract information that my former spouse uh, was in an equity contract, which I just explained. Um, <laughs> it took a day or two after I discovered this detail to recognize the inner meanings for me. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, this is the piece of the story that Phil Illy is not recognizing, which Aaron Terrell is not recognizing, with which Rachel Levine is not recognizing, which uh, Martina Rothblatt and... Um, uh, Pritzker, Jennifer Pritzker, all uh, cross-sex ideating men who ideate themselves a female persona, they don't recognize the hardships that most of us are enduring. Perhaps Rachel Levine does not publicly um, defame Martha Peabody Levine, the ex-wife, but then she has a little bit more power. She's also a doctor. Um, at least uh, more than half of us were defamed in some way, either in court with legal papers, as I was, or in social media. Um, I was also defamed uh, to whatever friends and relatives would listen to Nettie. And so these are the pieces of uh, uh, the collateral damage these are the peripheral uh, consequences that men who ideate a female persona are causing to the people that they have at some time called their loved ones. Even sisters, brothers, siblings are, um, oh, there was a little moth, <laughs> even the siblings are um, often affected and uh, this is not studied at all so I just I really do very strongly want to bring this up uh, if you uh, really want to be committed and put your money where your mouth is send for a copy of this book after you have read it then uh, you could put in some notes if you want to uh, and pass it off in a public place just like I'm doing with my magazine graffiti um, or put it in a doctor's waiting room or put it into a little free library. Order it for your library if you have the kind of public library that just automatically generates orders based on a request that you make online. Please do what you can support women like me. Please help the confused kids who think that they were born in the wrong body and help them to keep their body intact. Be well. Love, life, and nature.